Good evening. This is Okada Toshio Seminar, and today is November 10th. The rundown for today is so long. I always prepare rundowns for my broadcasts, but today I have 37 sheets. So I think tonight's going to be one of the longest seminars ever. I may take a few short breaks, so uh, I'm sorry everyone, but please be ready for a long battle. Um, I still believe that free part will end in about 35 to 40 minutes, uh, but I, uh, I'm planning to talk about all 14 mysteries which I started talking last week, spending the entire seminar both free and paid. Well, that's for your information. I'm also reminding you that starting from last week, the seminar starts at 7 o'clock at night. Uh, this week, Gundam course will also be from 7 o'clock at night. Uh, I forgot to announce it last week, but only next week's Gundam course will be on Wednesday, not Tuesday, which is the 13th. I hope you can adjust your time. Thank you very much. Well, if you can't watch it live, you can watch it later in the recording. Next week I'm going to have a Q&A session. I'm discussing the subjects in depth two weeks in a row, so I want to relax a little. So if you have any messages or questions, please send them to my email address, okay? The more messages I get, the easier it gets to chat, so I hope you guys can help me out on this. So let's get started from the review from last week. First, let's look at the menu. This is what I showed you last week, the 14 mysteries of Spirited Away. Well, we covered 4 mysteries out of the 14, and that's all we could talk about last time, and we ran out of time. The first mystery was about this strange town. Now, this is the structural drawing of the whole town in guidebook called Roman Album. The drawing is pretty convenient for us to get the idea of where things are like where Chihiro climbed the stairs, then went into the town, then to Abraya, and so on. Last week, I went through the first 16 minutes in great details, and half of them were about this town. In reality, time passes 10 times faster than that in our world, or I mean uh, 10 times slower. So when you spend one day or one month in this world, that's equivalent to 10 days or 10 months in the real world. I also said that this place is in between the human world and the world of gods. Secondly, I talked about So, I talked about this during the free broadcast as well, the mystery of Yubaba. She's supposed to be twins with Zeniba. I talked about how, in fact, Yubaba is running a good standing company and is the decayed version of Lady Eboshi from Princess Mononoke, or she can be Toshio Suzuki or Hayao Miyazaki, who lost their ideals. In a word, back in the days, she might have had ideals like Lady Eboshi, and there were reasons behind the order she had made. But as she grew older and older, she then became a tyrant. I talked about how Miyazaki saw himself or Suzuki in Yubaba. Then I talked about the third mystery of the story, the things in common between Spirited Away and other stories like Frozen and Harry Potter. As for the fourth mystery, I mentioned that the hole in the sky in the night of the Milky Way train is like a black hole. It's an existing hole in the Milky Way called Colsac Nebula. In Spirited Away, Abraya stores the coals made from the materials found from the hole. 
Because those calls are made from the dark matter, they are so heavy. Since Abraya stores a huge amount of dark matter, the time is distorted, and that's the reason why the time in their world passes 10 times slower than that in the real world. This was what I basically talked about in the paid part. Since 14 mysteries are too many, I narrowed them down to 13 by combining some of them. Now we are down to 9 more. As you can see, I combined the topics such as the mystery of Abraya and Ghibli and the mysteries of Unabara Electric Railways and Kamaji. So, there are fewer topics now. However, the contents haven't been reduced or omitted. Uh, anyway, let's get started. So, let's first talk about the mystery of Abraya and Jibri. Oh, oh my god, I'm already kind of tired. I don't know how I'm gonna survive the entire thing today. Uh, can I just take a break? What I'm planning to cover today is worth two broadcasts. Uh, well, instead I'll go easy next week. So let's begin. First, I'll talk about the mystery of Abraya and Ghibli. Here is a concept art of Abraya, where Chihiro gets sent to, or works at. It looks like a magnificent Japanese-style architecture. However, if you look closely, this lower half is made of concrete. The upper half looks gorgeous, but the only part that's gorgeous, well, how should I say? It's the penthouse of Yubaba, which looks so cool. This is like the captain's cabin of an old sailing ship or the one in Space Pirate Captain Harlock, where only the captain's cabin is gorgeously designed. This part looks so beautiful, but in fact, the place where the guests drink and play is limited to a very narrow space around here, and all other luxurious areas are parts of Yubaba's penthouse. In the initial plan, do you see how there's something sticking out over here? It actually says toilet, and it's non-flush toilet. But having a toilet in this location and the poo or pee fall from here all the way down to the ground. Now, let's see how it looks like from the side. So, this is also an image board that Miyazaki drew in the early stage. As I mentioned earlier, this magnificent and cool-looking part is Yubaba's penthouse. But here, they say guest room. This is one of the first drawings that Miyazaki made. It doesn't have Yubaba's gorgeous penthouse yet. The lower half of the building is made of concrete, as I said before. Here's the main gate. Here you see the bathroom, which is an atrium. And there are guest rooms around it with the employees' dormitories at the back. The first half has the watcher's seat and the bathroom, the second floor is the atrium, the third and the fourth floors are guest rooms, and finally Yubaba's penthouse is on the fifth floor and up. Miyazaki calls this building quasi-western style. It's a terminology of architecture and quasi means to simulate. What it means is that... Um, as you can see from the huge boiler house below, as I said earlier, this is made of concrete. In other words, it's not a Japanese-style architecture, but a fake version made of concrete. Any Japanese-style architecture that has adopted the technology of Western architecture is called quasi-Western style in architectural industry. Many of the buildings in this style were built during the Meiji era by the carpenters who weren't so sure about how to build so-called Western architecture. They imitated its appearance with the new materials and plans to make buildings that looked like Western buildings. 
but also couldn't help adding huge Japanese tiles on top. So that's how this style started. But this is Miyazaki's intensive message which tells us how this style also signifies the technology of Japanese animation. Because Japanese animation is only an imitation of Western art form that Disney and others started, with an addition of superficial decoration in Japanese aesthetics. Miyazaki himself often says that all today's Japanese animation do is to decorate what the West has started with its own aesthetics. That's why it can be described as quasi-Western style. This building is actually a powerful irony towards Princess Mononoke, which is Miyazaki's his own work. No matter how all these domestic subjects during the Muromachi period and the Jomon period are portrayed, how the theory of cultural sphere marked by Laurel Forest is applied, how Japanese methodologies are pictured, animation is originally Western in terms of technology and film grammar. Miyazaki is pointing out how everything that he makes is merely quasi-Western style because of that. In other words, Abraya as well as Princess Mononoke, which is his previous work, signifies Studio Ghibli itself. The women who work there are the staff members of Ghibli during the production of Princess Mononoke. There were some troubles and many animators quit. Then the majority of the newcomers were females. At one point, people said, oh, there are only girls working for Ghibli, because they consisted mostly of new female employees. By collecting all those female animators, Yubaba, or the producer Suzuki, commanded that the next movie had to be a hit. Not only because Ghibli became so huge, but there another animation director, Isao Takahata, spent their money like water without doubting the expense. So they had to make anime that satisfied the audience's desires with these female animators, just like having female employees work in a quasi-Western style architecture to satisfy the desires of the customers. Abraya holds such a strong message, guests are gods, and Ghibli's mission is to make fun animation endlessly in order to please them. Miyazaki is trying to say that his job is exactly like the job of a Raya. In fact, one of the themes behind Spirited Away was criticism towards Ghibli, which was becoming greedier and greedier. It's also a criticism against Suzuki. Catch lines such as that Abraya is a whorehouse that critics would love to hear were created in order to create ambiguity so that critics won't know the real theme. Well, at that time, so Miyazaki drew a concept art. Here's a god entering a braya, here's watcher's seat, and Yubaba sits in it. Then here the workers are washing away the dirt of the guests. Then those guests go home feeling good. This process is a metaphor for the people who visit the theater. The audience coming to the theaters live a stagnant daily life and builds up stress. It's commonly said that movies make them impressed, laugh, and shed tears so that they can go home feeling refreshed. That's how they earn money, and that's why a movie has to make a hit. It's also something that Suzuki always said, which Miyazaki agreed to, but at one point he couldn't take it anymore. Especially because Princess Mononoke made an unprecedented hit. Miyazaki, without knowing that, Spirited Away would make a bigger hit, <laughs> try to deliver a message through Spirited Away that because they made so much money, something has gone wrong. Then they made more money. <laughs> So, where did this idea that Spirited Away portrays sex industry come from? Well, it came from the interview with the producer Suzuki when he talked to Miyazaki about the hostesses in Japanese hostess bars. He mentioned how many of them originally can't communicate with people well, but it's interesting how after they spend several weeks as a hostess, they start communicating well with the customers.
When Miyazaki heard that, he was very impressed and said, it's similar to our Ghibli. Our animators come from countryside, only able to draw pictures and only interested in anime, but as we create work together, they gradually learn how to communicate with each other. That was all Miyazaki said, but the media would happily publicize the idea that today's Japan has turned into a hostess bar or a whorehouse. If Ghibli said that it would be the theme of the next movie, then it would win a great reputation. Suzuki's used this kind of promotion strategy for Tales from Earth Sea. It's what weekly magazines do. I used to believe in them. As I said last time, uh, until about a year ago, I didn't really like Spirited Away. I thought it was amazingly made, but not my favorite. Because I was completely deceived by the publicized theme and thought, well, it's about sex industry, and now I'm really embarrassed. <laughs> Uh, the way Suzuki promotes is to distort the essence of a work into something that sounds catchy. For example, Suzuki advertised the tale of the Princess Kaguya with a catchphrase, Princess Kaguya's sin and punishment, and got into a huge fight with the director Takahata who strongly opposed against the idea. Then Takahata completely stopped being involved in the promotion of Kaguya. Princess Mononoke also was originally titled The Legend of Ashitaka, and Miyazaki said Ashitaka was the main character. But the entire story of the movie was misunderstood by the audience because Suzuki had announced the title Princess Mononoke in advance at a press conference. For Tales from Earth Sea, because the media had reported how Miyazaki and his son, Goro Miyazaki, were on bad terms with each other, Suzuki took advantage of that in order to get the media's attention and made many intentional speeches that the movie was about patricide, which symbolized Goro's denial of his father, it's really what magazines would do. But Miyazaki is someone who doesn't make things he doesn't know about. He has made numerous comments on how the purpose of making Spirited Away was to depict Ghibli in a book called The Great Adventure of Spirited Away, published by a minor publisher called Fusion Product. Why in this book? It's because it's the only book that Suzuki doesn't censor. Miyazaki was pretty close to the president of the publisher, there are actually many books about the movie or Studio Ghibli. Any publisher can publish the book if they don't use any illustrations. But Suzuki only authorizes major publishers like Kaodansha, Kadokawa, and Bungei Shunju to publish so-called official books with lots of illustrations. This publisher called Comic Box uh, no, I mean, uh, Fusion Product is not at all a leading publisher, but they could publish this book just because the president was a left-wing and friends with Miyazaki. So this book is really like a miracle. So there are so many secret stories in this book like Miyazaki complaining about Ghibli, staff bitching about Miyazaki, and Miyazaki's confessions on what he really wanted to do. So. Even Ghibli Museum doesn't sell this book, which makes this book unofficial because Suzuki hasn't authorized it. So, according to this book, the reason why all male workers are frogs is because at President Tokuma's funeral, there were many high-ranked people in suits, and they all looked like frogs to Miyazaki. He thought, oh, that's a frog called Prime Minister. Even the Prime Minister was at the funeral. Those executives who approached Ghibli to make money all looked like frogs. On the other hand, animators including Miyazaki himself are treated like insects with no respect. That's why the female workers are portrayed as slugs, because again, according to herbalism, slugs are also insects. Well, so are frogs, but anyway, that's the intention behind these character settings. Miyazaki mentions in the book I just showed you that animator's job is irrational and extremely hard. Miyazaki said he wanted to create a story where a small girl is forced to work at Ghibli. 
Chihiro is based on a real person, which is also on Wikipedia. Nihon Television is one of Ghibli's patrons, and there is an executive called Mr. Okuda. Now, Chihiro's model is his daughter. One day, Miyazaki suddenly started insisting that there's no way she would be raised properly under her parents. I mean, he really can't stay out of other families' business. He said that he needed to do something and suggested that if she came to Ghibli, she would become a more decent adult. Mr. Okuda took Miyazaki's daughter, uh, no, I mean, uh, Mr. Okuda took his daughter to Miyazaki's second home quite often. This was where the basic structure of Spirited Away was created. Just like those businessmen who approached Ghibli and Miyazaki shamelessly for money. Chihiro's parents turn into pigs for being tempted by food, and their daughter is taken to an unreasonable and horrifying workplace like Ghibli and forced to work there. Wikipedia also writes what happened. The original idea of the movie was that Miyazaki wanted to please a 10-year-old daughter of his personal friend. She was a daughter of Seiji Okuda, a Nihon TV's movie producer, and became the model of the main character Chihiro. At the time, Miyazaki used to invite the daughters of Ghibli officials in his mountain hut and held a training camp once a year. He had never made a movie targeted for girls around 10 years old, so he became motivated to make one. In other words, the concept of the movie in Abraya is that a girl who is forced to join Ghibli for the convenience of the adults is made an animator to make anime that comfort the audience. Isn't that terrible? This is the basis. But then Miyazaki keeps on including additional interesting elements the basic concept is like the part of Abraya made in concrete. The anime transforms from the basic concept because he keeps wondering how he can make it more interesting. A girl he likes is being exploited by Suzuki at Ghibli, but there's nothing Miyazaki can do to help. He was like, I'm just an old man, which sounds pretty gross. He said, I'm just an old man, so I can't fight Suzuki who's as scary as Yubaba, but I can give her some advice. So he drew himself as Kamoshi. He didn't forget to give himself a cool character. Actually, Chihiro gets stronger without any help, but Miyazaki had another alter ego besides Kamaji. It's Haku, that beautiful boy who is literally covered with blood in order to work for Yubaba. Just like that, Miyazaki had to work bloody hard in order to make anime under Suzuki's unreasonable command. And if Suzuki decides that Miyazaki was too old and useless, he would ruthlessly throw Miyazaki away in a hole and start favoring young animators like Miyazaki's disciples, his son Goro Miyazaki, and more than anyone else, Takahata. <laughs> Miyazaki is like Suzuki-san, so now you care more about the younger guys than me. Miyazaki's such selfish delusions overflow in the scenes where Yubaba dotes on a child called Bo, which makes the movie more and more interesting. But only Chihiro doesn't abandon Miyazaki or beautiful Haku and goes to meet Takahata at Zeniba at risk of her life. <laughs> and Chihiro finally tells Miyazaki her real name, which is a metaphor for teaching him the kind of anime he should be making and leaves. And that anime is spirited away. In other words, this is Miyazaki's autobiographical story, which I think is so well made. It is an animation for Miyazaki, by Miyazaki, from the beginning to the end. At some point, it was no longer an anime for 10-year-old girls. Now he was making it for himself. On Your Mark, made around this time, was similar. From around this time, Miyazaki started making stories only he could understand. But that type of story created something sinister and deep in taste. 
On top of that, he still had a will to make his movies a hit. In addition, he had skills, experience, great ideas and imagination to make that happen. And this became the secret for the popularity of his movies. That's how the movie reflects his strong sense as an author. However, an anime Miyazaki would make for himself could not make a mega hit like Princess Mononoke did. It's like Miyazaki's autobiographical novel, but it lacks sociality. Unless it looks like it's criticizing society, critics won't pay close attention to the context. That's where Suzuki's misleading advertisement comes in. Suzuki knew at the early stage of production that Miyazaki started making an autobiography. Then he thought the movie wouldn't make a mega hit unless he made the movie look like Princess Mononoke, which criticized the society. That's why Suzuki intentionally misled the media by saying a braya is an analogy for sex establishment, like those Japanese hostess bars. His strategy worked so well, and the critics, including myself, were tricked by it. That's how we never got to the idea that the movie actually depicted Studio Ghibli. It's written in this book that Abraya is Ghibli and people lose their minds working there, just like how Chihiro eventually didn't feel anything seeing her parents turning into pigs. In the actual movie, there is a scene where Chihiro sees them and feels sad. But, uh, well, when this book was made, the movie was only halfway done. During the interview, Miyazaki said that Chihiro doesn't feel sad at all when she sees her parents as pigs because she loses her mind working in a braya. But when she eats rice balls and remembers her name, she realizes how much she has changed, then finally shed tears. Just like that, people lose their minds as they work at a braya. It reflects the fact that um, Miyazaki was too busy when his mother died, so he didn't go to her funeral. He thought that people who work at an animation studio lose their minds more and more. Miyazaki fully understands it because he has given so many unreasonable orders and yelled at his Ghibli animators himself. As for Chihiro, she's so busy that she completely forgets her name and loses her mind. And the way for her to regain her mind... Uh, let me see, do I have it? It's the scene where he eats the rice ball. You see how she eats it, she's holding it with her both hands and eating it greedily. Actually, Chihiro doesn't have any desire in the first place. The reason why she's so skinny is because she doesn't have much appetite. When Chihiro's parents offer her food at that mysterious night market, she says, I don't want any. That's the usual Chihiro. She doesn't eat much during meals because she doesn't have the desire to. Even when people order her to eat, she just doesn't get hungry. But when Haku persuades her to eat and she eats the rice bowl for the first time, she realizes how hungry she has been all this time. It's like how Miyazaki, when he was making Princess Mononoke, he kept on saying how he wasn't interested in making his movies hit. But others kept trying to convince Miyazaki that with some manipulations, he would make more money. Miyazaki reacted to those voices and said he did not do what he did for money. But in reality, we can't do things with full energy without money. Just like how we can't work hungry. He needed to pay his animators too. On top of that, after he finished Kiki's delivery service, Miyazaki insisted all Ghibli animators become full-timers. To do that, he needed a huge amount of money. He also needed money to make the work he wanted to make. Plus, just around this time, Miyazaki started affirming his hidden desires. He thinks he hides them, but it's not true. I just said Miyazaki is not interested in money or his movies making hits. 
That's why he always says, but he actually cares about how much his movies sell or how popular they are more than anyone. That's because when he made the castle of Cagliostro, he thought he made it with all his might, but because it did so poorly on sales, I guess for five years, he didn't get any job offers from the industry. So he still really doesn't have any interest in becoming rich. He's so uninterested to the point that uh, his best treat is to eat curry-flavored cup noodle. <laughs> in a documentary, he's eating such salty food joyfully and saying how eating it behind his wife's back is the best meal for him. He's a type of person who wouldn't care about how much he has. But he's really curious or concerned about how popular his movies are or whether or not he beats Takata on sales. Now, speaking of sales, here's a free gift that comes with the DVD. The Rice Bowl Haku Mix. <laughs> Isn't this silly? Before, whenever his staff tried to add any free character figures to their DVDs, he used to be so mad and was against releasing the DVDs, but when he finally gave her permission, he decided to make the rice ball into a toy. Don't you think like, what the hell? Well, when I first saw it, I didn't want it, but then I started wanting it so much more, so I bought it through the internet auction. <laughs> I mean, first of all, the idea of selling DVDs with free gifts is unacceptable from Yazaki. He was against the idea of duplication. He prided himself on making movies as once-in-a-lifetime experience for his child audience who come to the theaters, so he was like, how dare you make VHS, laser discs, or DVDs out of them? He got more and more upset, and at the end, he was like, now you added a figure toy? You guys went too far this time. But now he decided to be part of it. No matter how much he tried to stop, the staff would do it anyway, and it would also help sustain Ghibli financially. He was obsessed with making Ghibli Museum while he was making Spirited Away, but that would cost several billion yen. And he knew that kind of money or his driving force would only come from the money making that he always hated and looked down on. That's why this rice bowl figure is the best message of Miyazaki, who decided to contribute to money making. It's that Chihiro acknowledges her desires and discovers her energy to live by eating the rice bowl really greedily, filling her mouth with the rice. So, I discussed uh, two topics simultaneously by mixing stories about Miyazaki, Ghibli, and the settings of Abraya. Uh, this is it for the mysteries of Abraya and Ghibli. So that was the first topic today. We are still on the intro and... Oops, I dropped it. Uh, Oh well. I have total of 13 mysteries to talk about. Now the sixth topic is mystery of Haku. So, here is the scene where Chihiro embraces Haku, who comes back covered with blood. In terms of how he functions in the structure of the story, he's designed as a bad boy figure, as seen from a girl. Ordered by authoritative adults, a pure boy does bad things in the outside world and comes back covered with blood. But such a bad boy who regular people are scared of is kind to this one girl, just like a hero in the girl's comic books. He's a boyfriend figure in the story. I've read a girl's comic book from Showa period called Hot Road, but that's how it looks like. Or it's like banana fish. There's a scene where Haku tells Chihiro, I've always been watching you. When Chihiro asks, how do you know my name, he answers, I have known you since you were little. 
At the scene where Haku passes on the rice bowl to Chihiro, Haku can't remember his name. After all, his name has been taken away. That's why he says, I can't even remember my own name, but it's strange, I remember you. Again, most people just follow the spoken lines, and if we take the line as it is, Haku is the guardian god of a river called Kohaku River, who rescues Chihiro when she's about to drown there. So he knows her because of that incident. At least that's what the script says. He says, I knew you since you were a child. However, the line that says, I can't even remember my own name, but it's strange I remembered you, doesn't make much sense. For example, when Chihiro worries about Haku when he's injured, Kamaji says, it's love. He says, this is love, love. But this too is too unlikely for any of Miyazaki's previous anime. Even if the protagonists in his movies like each other, they usually don't express their feelings in such a straightforward way. So why is it different here? Uh, there is also something called the mysterious lyrics. When Miyazaki made the movie, he sent some lyrics to Joe Hisaishi, the music producer, to tell him the image of the movie. I just quoted parts of it. It's a poem titled, At the River That Day. I go from the backyard where the sun shines, through the forgotten door and down the path where the hedges cast shadows on. The young child running from the other side is me, soaking wet and crying. I follow the footsteps of the sandbox father to the now buried river. The aquatic plants sway between the garbage. I met you in that small river. My shoes flow away slowly and get drawn into a small swirl and disappear. The dust that cover my heart and the fog that hit my eyes go away. The hand touches the air and the feel take the bounce of the ground. I live for someone and someone who lived for me. I went to the river that day. I went to your river. Well, it didn't become an official song, but these mysterious lyrics such as I return soaking wet, my shoes are flowing away slowly, someone who lived for me seem to be hinting something. After all, he did not adopt this song in the main story, but it helps us think about the strange scene where Chihiro remembers the past. It's toward the end of the story where she flies with Haku. It's a scene after they go to see Zeniba, ask her to forgive Haku, and now she flies in the sky on a white dragon, the incarnation of Haku. It is the biggest climax of the movie. Their Chihiro suddenly remembers. Well, like this. A hand is stretching out into the water, but the thing is, the size of the splash here is too big for just a hand put in the water. We can also think that it's because Chihiro drops, but no. If it's after she drops, then there shouldn't be such a big splash of water before the hand goes in. It looks like a hand stretches out toward the splash, caused by something bigger. To make this clear, uh, let's look at the storyboard in the scene. You see the same cuts in the storyboard, but what I paid attention to is the instruction that says a child's hand stretches out quickly. It says a child's hand, and that's because they needed to distinguish it with Chihiro's hand. It's not her hand, it's somebody else's. But they didn't want to publicize whose hand it was. This scene is trying to depict how a hand stretches out for something large that has fallen into the water, but why a child hand, not Chihiro's hand? In the next scene, Chihiro remembers it. Now, please take a look at her shoulders. The color of the face and the shoulders is the same. This tells us that she's naked. 
The reason why Chihiro is naked in this scene is that when she's small, she falls into that river naked. Well, kids are often dressed only in underwears where they play in rivers. Just like that, Chihiro is half naked when she falls into that river. Well, then... The child who is reaching the hand out is wearing a t-shirt. Isn't that weird? If that hand was Chihiro's hand, the situations would contradict, because she's at least not wearing anything on her upper body. The question is then, what is being depicted? Well, I talked about that last time. Maybe I should talk about the original story. In an interview, Miyazaki always said that one day he had to make his version of the Night of the Milky Way train. And he said that Spirited Away became it. The theme was the fact that when a person is alive, it is because someone has made them alive. Miyazaki said that he wanted to send that message clearly in the movie, and he actually did. He repeated that same message in the movie brochure that someone has always lived for you and made you live. But when you just follow the story of Spirited Away, we can't tell why Miyazaki emphasized it so many times. It's a theme that comes out in The Night of the Milky Way, which Miyazaki values so much. He said the theme is contained in the scene of Unabara Electric Railway. However, while there are plenty of research books on Spirited Away, I can hardly find anyone who discusses the thematic part in depth. That's because everyone is trying to understand Spirited Away from the story and above all, lines. But Miyazaki is a creator who speaks through images. For example, these two pictures look almost identical. The difference is that in the upper picture, the house is built on water, while in the lower one, on a hill. The upper picture is a scene of Unabara Electric Railway from Spirited Away. The lower one is a scene from the anime of the Night of the Milky Way train, where everyone is about to go to the world of death. They're drawn in almost the same composition. This is also one of the respects Miyazaki paid towards the Night of the Milky Way train. He intentionally drew a scene in the same composition. In the Night of the Milky Way train, the main character Giovanni is spacing out on the hill on a summer festival night called Centaur Festival. And before he knew, he was on a train bound for the Milky Way. Then he finds his best friend Campanella standing in front of him, soaking wet from head to toe. Right, as you can see, when Campanella wipes his shoulder with a handkerchief, many water drops fall. You may wonder why he's wet. Giovanni joyfully says, We're always together, Campanella, we're always together. But Campanella doesn't say anything back to Giovanni, instead he just smiled sadly. As the story continues, three people come on board. Most characters you see in this story are cats. So it's exciting to finally see more humans. A brother, a sister, and a private teacher come out. It's surprising because from the beginning, you see that the brother is missing a shoe. The sister who comes out with the brother gently wipes off the water drops of his head. They turn out to be the passengers of the Titanic. The ship they were on hit an iceberg, which caused a serious accident and everyone was submerged in the water. After all, this is the only scene with humans in it. It has this scary atmosphere. Then the teacher talks about the accident in a very gentle voice but without being emotional. 
She says, I was thinking while pulling the hands of my students and overtaking other children who are waiting for the life-saving boats. Since the boats were only on the opposite side and in the back, she overtook other people waiting in line, pushed her way through the other small children on board in order to save her students. She went forward and forward in order to survive. But she thought, will this really be the happiness of these kids, or is it my duty to take the sin and save them? As I reached the boat thinking like that, I saw a mother crying after finally loading her children on a boat and numerous other parents in the same circumstance. Finally, I couldn't care about what I had in mind anymore, so I hugged the two kids tightly on the ship that was sinking. The teacher talks about the incident so slowly and gently. While she talks, the sister wipes the brother's wet hair, then finds a shoe from somewhere, then put it on his foot. This scene contains the true greatness of Kenji Miyazawa, the author who also wrote The Night Hawk Star. Here he depicts people who attempt to make others happy through self-sacrifice. That was the theme that Miyazaki had always wanted to depict or had to depict. And that leads to At the River that day, where the shoes flow away slowly and get drawn into a small swirl and disappear, someone who has lived for me. He really tried to make an anime with this theme, someone who has lived for me. The teacher of the Night of the Milky Way train says, but it's going to be alright once we get to the Southern Cross. All the pain will be gone. And the three people get off at the station by the Southern Cross. There are a giant cross stands far beyond the horizon, and infinitely many worshippers walk towards the cross in line. The private teacher, the sister, and the younger brother are also dressed like the worshippers and walk along the cats. After passing the coal sack station, Campanella tells Giovanni, I can't go with you anymore. And as soon as he says that, he goes behind the tray and disappears. In fact, Campanella drowned after saving his classmate named Zanelli, who fell into the river. That's why the bodies of Campanella and the three other passengers were wet. Campanella sacrificed his life to help a friend. Well then, back to Spirited Away. The child's hand is extending to where someone fell. According to the storyboard, it's a child's hand. But it's not Chihiro, because Chihiro fell into the river naked. A child's hand stretched out to save her. In other words, there should be some child wearing a t-shirt who reached out to help Chihiro. And who's that? The main part of discussion in this part is to answer the question of who that is. When Chihiro says, how do you know my name, Haku says, I've known you since you were little. The reason why Haku knows Chihiro from a young age despite the fact that he can't even remember his own name is that he's Chihiro's dead brother. Chihiro did not float her shoes in the river. She fell in the river, her brother pulled her out to help her, but instead, he was swept out by the river and did not return. The scene shows how her brother became a god by sacrificing his life for someone else. Chihiro doesn't remember this. He says, I don't remember this, but I heard it from my mother. Even though she says she floated the shoes, she doesn't remember it at all. So, her mother didn't tell Chihiro that she had an older brother or he died because of her. She only told Chihiro that she almost drowned in a river when she was little. 
That's why she doesn't remember the incident, but Haku does. The reason why Haku says, it's strange that I remember you, and Kamaji affirms, it's the power of love, it's because it's fraternal love. Haku doesn't want to hurt Chihiro's feeling, so even if he remembers what happened, he won't say it, nor will Kamaji, or maybe Haku himself doesn't remember the incident. In the movie, they say Kohaku River was filled up with earth and disappeared later. The expression implies death, because this idea of landfill is a metaphor for burial, funeral, or a corpse. But he still is not a perfect god because Chihiro can see him. The real gods are only visible near Abraya at night after the lights are turned on. In the end, he does turn into a perfect god. It's a long story, and the free part still continues, but I want to finish up the free part with the mystery of Chihiro's parents. So, the seventh mystery of the thirteen mysteries of Spirited Away is the mystery of Chihiro's parents. Take a look at this. Chihiro says, Mom, that building's making noise. But the mother says, it's just the wind. Then she turns around, but she doesn't look at Chihiro. Chihiro keeps pulling her mother's hand and talking to her, but she ignores her and says to the father, I should have brought a sandwich from the car. In the scenes around here, Chihiro continues to try attracting the mother's attention, but she hardly sees Chihiro's face. She talks to Chihiro without looking at her, but she sees the father in the eyes when they talk. Her attitudes toward Chihiro and the father are too different. We've all realized that Chihiro's mother is acting strange. Everyone who saw it noticed it, because the mother is walking the rocky area of the river, which is dangerous for herself to walk on. And she says to the father, oh no, and hugs him. Then the father goes, it's dangerous. But when they are moving on, all she does to Chihiro is to turn around and says, be careful Chihiro, in a cold manner. It's because she unconsciously treats Chihiro badly because she's responsible for the eldest son's death. She does that unconsciously though. In her mind, she's taking good care of her daughter and she knows it's not her fault that her son died. But unconsciously, her true feeling reveals in her attitudes such as not looking at Chihiro's face or talking to her in a cold tone of voice. The parents are hiding the fact that they lost their eldest son to Chihiro. That's why the mother is called to Chihiro. Finally, everything makes sense now. The reason why the mother is being so cold to Chihiro without any explanations, or why Haku says to Chihiro that he knew her for a long time, but doesn't tell her where and when they've met. If Haku was a god, as he said, then it doesn't make sense that Chihiro can see him from the first scene, because in this world, gods are not visible to human beings until it gets dark at night and they arrive at the resort kind of place. Then they finally become substantial. Haku is turning into god of Kohaku River, but he's not one yet. I will make sure to define what these gods in Spirited Away are in the limited broadcast. Now, um, Haku died for Chihiro, so, but Chihiro, in return, went to apologize to Zeniba for a Haku by taking a one-way train. Traveling on a one-way train means that she went to the world of death, where she can't return from for a Haku. By doing so, the theme of her being able to live by someone's favor and her returning the favor by living for someone else conclude. It's clear in anyone's eyes that Chihiro goes to the world of death. After Kamaji tells her that no one can return from the world of death, she still rides on the train without a way back, which runs endlessly on water that looks like sticks. It means that she is willing to give up her life to save Haku. 
That's how the theme completes here. She realizes that she has never noticed that someone has saved her life. Then she decides that she's going to risk her life for someone as well. So at the end, the theme makes a full circle. How the theme of the movie goes round is not explained through lines, but through Hisaishi's dramatic music. That's why the structure of the movie is hard to understand. It's similar to how Giovanni, the protagonist of the Night of the Milky Way train, lives like a ghost in the beginning. He doesn't focus during his lesson at school in the first part of the story. That's because a poaching ship that hunt sea otters got into an accident with his father, a fisherman on board. Giovanni is so worried because his father might be dead. That's why he's absent-minded at school. It's hard to tell if he's alive or dead. But then, he gets on the Milky Way train with Campanella, who has died for someone else, and listening to the story of a passenger of the Titanic, who did not try to survive by pushing away others for the sake of her students, then at last Giovanni regains life. The safety of his father's ship ends up unknown after all. At the end, Campanella's father says calmly, Campanella probably won't make it. But at the same time, he tells Giovanni, I met your father, he'll be back soon. That's how he knows his father is alive, so Giovanni's father probably comes back safely. The fact that the ship made it back in spite of the accident means that he was able to live by someone's favor. That teaches Giovanni what it means to live for someone and becomes an energetic and cheerful boy again. Well, that's the basic plot of the Night of the Milky Way train. It's the same as the plot of Spirited Away. Chihiro in Spirited Away also lives her life absent-minded in the opening scene. It's uncertain whether she's alive or dead. She has no desire or appetite, like no face. Spread it away is a story in which she regains humanity from the state where she has no desire or goal like no face. The reason why Chihiro's family are drawn into the mysterious world in the first place is because none of them really had a life. The mother can't face her daughter because the death of her eldest son. The reason why her father decides to move is because he wants to change her mood. He doesn't give any reasons for moving like it's because of his job. At least it's not for Chihiro. The only reason can be that he wants to change his wife's mood because she's been closing her mind all this time. And Chihiro is in despair because she's separated from her friends. The question is, how are they going to live after the movie ends? Uh, I'm going to talk about it in the second half, but in fact, Miyazaki has a great happy ending for them. But the structure of the movie makes it hard for us to tell that it's a happy ending. It's a movie that Miyazaki made for himself. He loves his characters from the bottom of his heart, so he prepares a grand finale that made everyone happy, but I'll discuss that on the second half. I'll stop here for the first half today. In the second half, I'll tell a story that is a bit scary, but it will become a happy ending, so please do not worry. There are these stories which he told only to his favorite animators, and some are written in this book as evidence, but really, I'm going to talk about a really happy ending. Okay, so time for a questionnaire. Well... I'll take a break later, so if you want to use the restroom, please do so then. Now we have six mysteries left. Here. Well, it's somewhere inside this pile. Uh. Oh, there it is. We'll go super fast on the remaining six mysteries. I'll talk about the gods, Unabara, Electric Railway, and so on. Next week is going to be a special chit-chat week, so please send us mails. Now the result? Oh, great, thank you! Really not bad. Oh, um, please send the emails to my personal address, because it's personal. Feel free to talk about your secrets. If you don't want anything read, you can tell me and I won't, so don't worry. Um, uh, what was I? 
um, egoist. No, I mean mentalist. No, no, what am I? Oh, psychopath. Yeah, I'm a psychopath, but don't worry, I can still be considerate. I'll keep your secrets. Now, just a reminder to watch more, please become our member. With 550 yen per month, including tax, you can watch the last 10 weeks worth of the limited parts and 2200 yen per month to get access to the archive with all broadcasts in the past. Well, that was my advertisement, and that's it for the free part. So, good night to some of you, and please watch Spirit That Away if you've recorded it on TV. And as I said earlier, Gundam Core starts at 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Now, please switch to the limited part.